sex sells. And tonight, these women and their pimps are hoping to capitalize on that. It's an exchange Natasha Fall and Katerina McLeod are familiar with. They're former sex trade workers. I first entered into the sex trade industry at 14 years old. Uh, I'd been introduced by a few girls who had already been involved. They glamorized what it really was about. They minimized the violence and they talked about the money that I could make. In the beginning, it was money because I was a single mom. Mm -hmm and I had to support kids. I didn't have an education, so I, I justified my being in the business by, you know, my kids. Um, as time went on, you sort of get addicted to the lifestyle, the money, and then as time went on further, you feel like you amount to nothing. What am I going to do um, if I leave the business? I have no education. I don't have time to go back to school because I need to make money. Though prostitution is a reality we don't often like to see, technically, it's not illegal. The uh, simple act of prostitution is not mm -hmm. illegal in Canada. However, things that uh, are ancillary to prostitution, such as running a body house, living off the avails, and street solicitation, those things are illegal. At least that was the case. In September, Ontario Superior Court Justice Susan Himmel effectively decriminalized adult prostitution in Canada by striking down three provisions in the criminal code. The existing laws as we know them were introduced in 1985, mm -hmm. but prostitution laws go back to uh, the 1880s when they were introduced in the criminal code. They've changed forming um, over the decades, but uh, they've been there mostly to protect vulnerable women and children. Mm -hmm. Ironically, the provisions designed to protect women were struck down thanks to three sex trade workers yeah. who claimed the provisions violated so, their rights. I can't tell you well, in this coming. case, the claim for unconstitutionality was that they infringed specific sections mm -hmm. of the Charter, and those sections were Section 7, dealing with the uh, right to life, liberty, and security of the person, and also the uh, Section 2B provisions that deal with freedom of expression through forms of communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, the street solicitation was a form of communication. Christian Legal Fellowship, along with the Catholic Civil Rights League and Real Women of Canada, intervened in the case, arguing the law should be upheld. We looked at it from the aspect of harm to women and also the commodification of women through the selling of their bodies. Mm -hmm. And the harm in general that this brings not only to children and to women, but those that are exposed to it. Dominatrix and former prostitute Terry Jean Bedford and prostitutes Valerie Scott and Amy Lebovich argued that if they could work at home in a familiar environment, screen clients by communicating ahead of time and hire bodyguards with their earnings, they'd be safer. Justice Himmel agreed, ruling the current laws forced women out of the safety of their homes and onto the street. They relied on the case of um, the Picton Farm mm -hmm. in British Columbia and the fact that 300 or so uh, prostitutes over the past 20 years or more have been murdered. Natasha Fall and Katerina McLeod don't buy that. They say it's not the laws that harm women. It's the Johns who are raping women because they believe their money owns them. It's serial killers who believe that these women are, are disposable and that nobody loves or cares for them. The laws are not going to change that. Fall is founder and director of Sex Trade 101, an educational advocacy group. She's counseled over 700 sex trade workers and works with the Toronto Police Sex Crimes Unit. She helped the Crown make their case against Bedford, Scott and Lebovich. She says Justice Himmel's decision was misguided. You know, uh, higher bodyguards? Like, are you kidding me? Um, I, I believe that that is something that they have put into place as a way to sugarcoat and deny that there is pimp abuse, mm -hmm. which they have been doing all along. Mm -hmm. They have been saying that violence only happens on the street, that there's no such thing as pimp abuse behind closed doors mm -hmm. and at indoor locations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the police, they can, they can tell you that, that the majority of the arrests that they make against <laughs> traffickers and pimps are behind closed doors, mm -hmm. not on the street corners. Mm -hmm. Armin Labarge can back that right up. Right? He's chief of police for York Region in Ontario. We deal mostly with massage parlors, uh, so prostitution has taken on that form as opposed to uh, um, street walking types of prostitution cases. Regardless of where it happens, prostitution is inherently unsafe, he says. Sex workers are often prime targets for violent assaults and serial killers. 
the fact that you're, you're getting alone with somebody that you don't know, somebody that uh, might well have a knife, might well have a gun, mm -hmm. might well resort to violence uh, with his hands, um, puts you in a very vulnerable situation and it's dangerous, period. Okay. York Region officers can still lay child prostitution, procuring, human trafficking and municipal bylaws if the ruling isn't overturned, he says. We realized too when we had an explosion of massage parlors that if we were going to use the criminal code legislation to try to eradicate these um, enterprises which were fronts for prostitution in our communities that we couldn't use the criminal code. That's why we went to the municipalities and we enacted, uh, had them enact bylaws that regulated where they were, regulated their hours, regulated the age of the attendants, regulated things that also made it easier for us to investigate that there were no violations of them and uh, none of them were complying with that. We went from like 150 uh, massage parlors in York Region in 2002 to six today. But his officers are concerned about what could happen to the communities they've sworn to protect. I don't think Canada is ready for five-story brothels like you'll see in, in Germany, and I don't think uh, our community is prepared uh, for what comes with that. And I don't think any of our community leaders want to start to have to decide, okay, which neighborhood is going to get this brothel? When we deal with prostitution, we're not just dealing with prostitution, there's violence associated to it. We've seen murders and robberies and, and serious assaults and sexual assaults. After 17 years working as a massage parlor prostitute, Katerina McLeod says she's witnessed and been on the receiving end of that violence. I've watched girls be beat like men, you know, like held by their throats and beaten by men and the owners do nothing because the customer's always right. So, you know, there's times I'd leave a room beaten up or hurt and my boss would make me go right back in, you know, didn't care. So bringing the girls inside, how is that safer? You know, if and while she admits two scary. years ago it, she would have been happy awesome. about the ruling, you know, today <laughs> she's heartbroken. I, I, she's making a bad decision. She is. This is one of the worst things that I've ever gone through in my life. And to be able to come out of it and be where I am today is by the grace of God because it ruins you. It takes everything from you. And these women can say that they want it and they're for it. They're not. They're killing themselves and they know it. There's not one girl who is, comes from a good family or educated family who would want this. They just wouldn't. Though Bedford, Scott and Lebovich claim the ruling is an emancipation day for sex trade workers, McLeod and Fall disagree. The average age that someone gets involved in the sex trade industry is 13 to 16 years old. There's no consent in that. Mm -hmm. If it's to feed your children uh, because you, you, know, you have no money to put food on the table, how is that a real choice? Mm -hmm. And I believe that it's the minority voice that we're hearing right now. How are you feeling today? Though Fall is concerned about Himmel's ruling, okay. she agrees with one thing. Canada's prostitution laws need to change. Because oh, prostitution is an industry okay. based on Just supply and demand, she says we need to adopt the Swedish model. It criminalizes the purchase, but not the sale of sex, by jailing the Johns. Street prostitution in Sweden has been cut in half, and they've seen no significant increase in indoor or internet prostitution. This week, several interveners, as well as the Ontario and federal governments, will present arguments before the Ontario Court of Appeal. They'll ask for a reversal of Justice Himmel's decision. In the meantime, the laws stay the same, but given what's at stake, there's a chance the case will wind its way up to the Supreme Court. Ultimately, the nation's highest court may have the final say on how we sell sex in Canada. In Toronto, Ontario, Bridget Entry, 100 Huntley Street.